personal brand is therefore a promise of what someone would provide or uh, be it a service or simply a feeling when someone is dealing with that person. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dipti Shah. And today I have with me Miss Rebecca Leopard, the founder of Upgrading Women. Hello, Rebecca, and welcome to my show. Thank you for having me. So what is a personal brand? Personal brand is therefore a promise of what someone would provide or uh, be it a service or simply a feeling when someone is dealing with that person. For example, if your personal brand is someone who is cheerful and always joyful, then that is the promise that you will deliver once people get in touch with you. They say the future of brand is personal. How did personal branding become so important these days? Yes, I think, first of all, because the uh, social media is definitely now at the forefront. Um, for example, if you are applying for a job, there is absolutely now no negotiable um, questionnaire in the form where you put your social media as well. So who you are as a person is sometimes, can be sometimes more important than your degree, your work experience. So that is uh, why personal brand is very crucial in getting employment, getting client. On which platforms can a personal brand reside? A personal brand can reside in any platform and all platform. However, it again depends on your goal. Are you promoting yourself as an employee or as a business owner or both, meaning that you are an employee and you have a side business and you want to promote that side business? Therefore, you have to carefully select where each of your persona will be then broadcasted on which platform. Each platform has their own uniqueness, their own value proposition. As we know, Instagram has now various uh, ways from the feed to video, reels, and so on. And we know that TikTok is great as well. Um, but then, especially because um, now we're talking about as professionals, as business owners, I'm sure the audience here are um, mostly our uh, entrepreneurs, then I would advise for you to choose one platform that is especially for professionals. Speaking of one professional platform, the first and foremost is LinkedIn. Can yes. you share some tips and tricks about how to build a personal brand on LinkedIn? Okay. Now, first thing that we must think about when we think about LinkedIn is to let go of the stigma first because LinkedIn five years ago is very different to LinkedIn today. Five years ago, LinkedIn was uh, seen as uh, a job seekers platform, meaning that if you're active on LinkedIn, you're, the stigma is that you are desperate to get a new job or that you are actually sneaking to move from company to company and that you are worried when your employers see you being active on LinkedIn, but Absolutely. not today. Yes. So I would encourage you, even if you're not looking for a job, be active on LinkedIn because it also increase your visibility. And what I mean by visibility is that we are now in a very remote slash hybrid um, way of working. And there is what we call visibility or proximity bias. It means that your boss, the one who decides your salary, the one who decides if you get promoted or the one who decides who gets to lead this particular project, you also, just like a, any brand, you also have to be on top of their mind. You, um, If you are working remotely, then obviously you don't get a lot of face time with uh, the powers that be. So LinkedIn is a, is a great way to showcase that, hey, boss, I'm here and I'm great. Um, and here are some of the tips that I'm going to share with you. So here are the five tips to win on LinkedIn. Firstly, you have to do a profile makeover. 
what I mean by this is, again, this is still social media. People still um, can be judgmental. Um, again, whether or not you're looking for a new job, people are still going to take a peek. What do you do? What have you done? Um, uh, where did you go to school? So make sure your profile really represent who you want to be perceived as. Okay. Don't be uh, too long uh, on, on description of one particular job, but just be brief about what you have done and what you have achieved. And secondly, you have to also engage positively and regularly on LinkedIn. I would suggest as a start, spend 20, 30 minutes, maybe during your lunch break, to engage with the citizen of LinkedIn. So you can like, comment, and when you comment, again, because this is a professional setting, please showcase that you actually um, are serious about your commentary. Don't use bad language. Don't even use abbreviation. Be mindful and respectful. And if you are disagreeing, be prepared to present an evidence like a link to an article or a link to some news that, um, that made you um, have that particular opinion. But definitely showcasing your opinion is a very good thing. LinkedIn is not like Facebook in that way where, you know, people from different political background and uh, go debate. But LinkedIn is a very good place to showcase that you are definitely a person with principle, with opinion, with, um, with a lot of knowledge. And thirdly, use three hashtags. Unlike Instagram, where you use loads and loads up to 30 hashtags, on LinkedIn, the best practice is to use three, not more, not less. And the three hashtags are as um, the sweet spot between generic and um, niche. As in, if you're talking about employer branding, if you're talking about sustainability, then use hashtag sustainability. And as well, um, the next thing that you really need to invest is um, a great headshot and the banner because those are actually the first thing people see. And if you at work have a signature email banner at the bottom, think about it that way, that on LinkedIn, the top is the, the real estate that you have to really optimize. If you can, do invest on a professional headshot photographer because that will be your face everywhere on LinkedIn. Every time you comment, people see your headshot. And then um, last but not least, of course, you have to post. There are so many best practices that I'm sharing here with you on the screen, but definitely at the very least, post three times a week at um, work hours. So wherever your time zone is, use the uh, nine to five um, time frame for you to post. And there are so many things uh, that I cannot share with you within you know <laughs> five minutes, but definitely if you want to um, connect with me on LinkedIn, I uh, share on there as well almost every day how you can win on LinkedIn and in general on your personal branding. So that's a little bit about what I have to share today. Those are fantastic five tips to start actually, you know, making yourself visible on LinkedIn. Rebecca, could you break down the main components of a personal brand for us? The main component of a personal brand is first, the brand look and feel. Secondly, the tone of voice. And thirdly, your promise. That is the the bow that ties uh, everything together. And when I say uh, look and feel, I would suggest that you really choose what you want to be perceived at. Uh, a very good advice that I have heard since I was little is dress for the profession or the position that you want to be. So, if you want to be or aspire to be promoted as manager or as director, dress already as if you already got that position. 
I know that these days, of course, the dress code or the definition of professional dress code is very fluid, but take a look at your own personal or your own um, corporate culture and have a look how the current bosses are dressing. I know that it doesn't mean that you have to conform, but what I'm saying is that still think about your own look. Like, for example, if you are wearing jeans and hoodie, that's absolutely fine. But make sure that your jeans and hoodies are actually washed properly <laughs> and regularly. So even that can differentiate how someone can look um, if someone looks really, really professional and crisp. So it doesn't mean that you have to wear branded. So that is um, the look and feel. And when I say feel, that also, well, yeah, you do you want uh, someone when in your presence, do you want someone to feel uh, like they're like really serious or they want to be so casual, so transparent? And there's no right or wrong. Again, look at your own profession and look at your own corporate culture where you work at. Right. And Second uh, is the tone of voice. Um, it's the same thing, but the thing that you are saying with um, with the way you write email, with the way you write messages, and the way you uh, communicate either via Zoom or the way you present. Um, and this is, again, going back to who you really are as a person, because if you're trying to be someone else, um, it won't be sustainable. You will last probably a, a month uh, looking and sounding like a, a person Someone that you're else, yeah. to be. <laughs> That's and, not happening, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but at least be mindful. Uh, for example, um, in a certain situation, yes, of course, it's fun. Uh, it's fine for for me, as an example, I really like to joke a lot, but at the same time, you have to be mindful. Does your joke translate well in this community that Absolutely. you're actually, right? And especially now we are in a global um, workplace. Not everyone, even though we all speak English, not every expression, again, can be perceived in the same way. Absolutely. So be mindful of that as well. And lastly, yes, the promise. For me, for example, a brand promise, uh, a personal brand promise of me is like when you're working with me, you get someone who's punctual, someone who's working um, really hard for you, even uh, with or without any monetary exchange. For example, if someone is asking for me to speak on the stage, even when I'm not paid, the audience will not ever know because I will equally show up with my best dress. I will equally show up fully prepared. I know what I'm going to talk about and I'm, uh, I'm going to show at least half hour early than, um, than the actual event. And I will shake hands with everybody and so on and so forth. So that is the brand promise. Uh, Rebecca, um, even though, quote unquote, she's Asian, she is on German management timing. <laughs> so that is what uh, I want, because when you have that complete brand, uh, personal brand sorted, this is what actually happens. People that have, quote unquote, experienced Rebecca, either on my podcast, on the stage, or just uh, meet me in person. The next time they're going to talk about me to a person that doesn't know me, they will exactly talk about me the way I want to be perceived. So in, in my uh, vision, I would like that person, oh, I just met someone who's very lively and she's so engaging to speak with and she's so transparent and she doesn't take herself too seriously. If she trip on a on a stage or if her microphone doesn't work she wouldn't ruin it for everybody else she would be just laughing at herself and makes everyone feels at ease working 
uh, with her. So that is what I want people to quote unquote talk about me behind my back. That is the whole purpose of a personal brand. Rebecca, since um, we're talking about hashtag businesswomen podcast, yes. how would, uh, say, suppose I'm a businesswoman, I'm starting from zero. What yes. are the basic things that my brand should convey? Definitely for me, um, uh, the first and foremost advice is be very, very open as in open to criticism, open to even the most um, what would you say? Um, something that is very negative. Uh, and the reason why is because when you are new um, in a market or uh, new in, in, in this uh, community or new in this particular industry, you are the rookie, you're the junior. Just take it in the chin and smile through it I have received so many criticism uh, about how, the way I name my company, the way I show up. I always look in pink. People criticize, Rebecca, why are you? I thought you were a feminist. Why are you wearing pink? Well, <laughs> so instead of being offended, so really, really, um, if you can go out there and have a super thick skin like an iron man or an iron woman um and then that is how people will remember you hey i have spoken all of these words that is probably offensive to this woman but she is really still being positive and she still want to be around me she must be someone who is very uh resilient and who doesn't want to be partnered with someone who's resilient, someone who's persistent and determined? Uh, Rebecca, you moved countries recently and it's difficult to, you know, put in your roots in a new environment, in a new network for business. How did you personally build your brand, Re Rebecca Leopard, again? And could you share some challenges and, uh, you know, the steps that you faced in this journey? Yes. Let me give you a little bit of context. So I am Indonesian. And I had never left my country until 2020, the best year of our lives. <laughs> I moved to England and because my, my husband is British and my three children um, are British too, I just moved here along with them. And when I got here, A, I couldn't immediately go to work, not just because of the pandemic and the lockdowns, but also the visa. I didn't have the visa and the right to work yet at that point. So it was a crazy anxiety um, inducing challenge because how can you build a personal brand, um, especially on LinkedIn, whereby you yourself cannot um, even, you don't even have the right to work. And I was so afraid that people are like, oh, you're breaking the immigration law because you're promoting yourself, whereas you're not even allowed to work in this uh, country. So that was why um, I hesitated at the beginning to promote myself on LinkedIn. But what I did instead was that, oh, what was the one thing that I can do that is outside the limelight? It was to volunteer. So I go to my local community where I could volunteer and I volunteer not only uh, for, uh, of course it's for charitable purposes, but to use my actual skill. So instead of volunteering in a soup kitchen, because I'm not a chef, uh, that is outside my quote unquote personal brand, right? Um, I volunteered in a local church because they have a magazine and I could, uh, and I have a long uh, history in the magazine publication, I volunteered to be their editor. So even in my voluntary experience, there is still transferable skill that I can then after I get my proper visa, I can showcase, hey, I volunteered in this church and I can have actual portfolio about um, what I've done. So I didn't waste time. And secondly, as soon as uh, I'm allowed, I got, 
I, I really, really then invested my time on LinkedIn. When I started, it was this time last year. So it was end of year 2021. And at that point, I didn't even know LinkedIn algorithm, but I put my student hat on. I'm 39 years old, by the way. So I would like every bis- hashtag business women out there to disregard our age because we should be a student forever, a l- lifetime learner. So at the moment after, um, so back then I was learning, I was looking at all the videos, how to do LinkedIn and even ask younger people <laughs> how to how to do this and don't be embarrassed, be vulnerable, like I have to restart. Can you give me some tips? And Believe me, uh, I think with the technology, you know, moving at the speed that it is and, and we in, increasing in the numbers in our age, we are going to look upon the younger people to guide us to actually survive on this, you know, technological century that's yes. coming, I think. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So the first thing is leave your ego absolutely. In, in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nobody cares, believe me. Yes, uh, everybody's learning because even if you have learned or mastered something a year ago, the algorithm has changed. It will change every six months if you're lucky. Um, if you're unlucky, it will change in uh, in two months. So even at the moment, as we speak, just this morning, what I was doing is just learning how to do uh, Facebook and Instagram ads. I have been um, in my previous job I was the one, I was that millennial that a lot of Gen X and boomers were relying upon to do the Facebook ad for their company. But of course, it was 10 years ago. I have to relearn everything from scratch. And because I already left um, my ego at, at the door, I came with an open mind and, okay, YouTube bloggers teach me everything. So that is my tips for everyone in the business world, especially us women. We have so many challenges. We already have so many responsibilities. And while you are folding clothes, while you are mopping and doing the dishes, what have you, use that time to put on your earphone, listen to podcasts, listen to tips and tutorials. Do not waste any um, idle minute keep learning keep your head down and once you post something or you put yourself out there and nobody is engaging in your content go on to the next don't like um ruminate like oh why nobody like my video i spend an hour or a full day doing it no keep producing keep producing non-stop it's a it's it's every every day is a new day. Every post is a new post. You'll never know which one that actually will be seen by your future client or your future uh, business partner. So keep doing it. Don't stop until probably <laughs> you have a sore throat and you have to stop. Stop. But other than that, keep going. That's my tips. Now, those are wonderful words of advice, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Where can people find you and follow you? It's so easy. If you're on Instagram, go uh, on Instagram at Rebecca Leppard. You can see that um, my my what my life is like. But if you want more professional tips, go to linkedin.com slash in slash Leppard. It's very easy to find. And you will see more of this pink and purple lady in there and you will always remember me and therefore you must think about how you present yourself on LinkedIn so people can remember you. Fabulous. Thank you so much for coming on my show. It was such a pleasure. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you. 